Hey, what's up guys, it's Nick2, and today I am incredibly excited to show you guys the Anomaly Power Pyromancer build, which is probably one of the best builds in the entire game and actually currently holds the world record for having the fastest Boomtown time. This build just completely owns everything. It's a ton of fun to play, does an absolutely insane amount of damage. Uh, one thing I do want to give as a kind of disclaimer is that there's a lot of different Anomaly Power Pyromancer builds, which I think is actually really cool. However, the reason that I think this version is the best, um, it is subjective of course, but I think that the, this one is the best because some of the other ones have certain problems in other areas where I think this build kind of is overall more versatile. It's pretty good at you know clearing things really quickly and it also has really good single target damage and it isn't insanely difficult to play either. So in my opinion, I think this is the better one, but I'll probably be covering the other ones such as the phaser heat, uh, or sorry, the phaser beam or the ash blast variation of this. A lot of different variations, but we're just going to be covering this one. And as you can see from the gameplay, uh, it's absolutely insane. And I'm going to include some gameplay at the end of the video of just me talking about uh, how you want to play it while I'm doing a Boomtown. And then I'll show you guys the damage breakdown at the end. So yeah, with all that said, as you can see, the build just is so much fun to play. It does an actually insane amount of damage. And it's a nice break from, you know, all the firepower builds. So let's just get right into it. Uh, Real quick though, turns out that 86% of you guys aren't subscribed. I'm really close to 100k. I'd really appreciate it if you like the content. Uh, please do subscribe. There's a ton more content to make as my cat is climbing around. Also use Nick use code Nick2 for 10% off advanced GG. All right, getting into the skills. So with this build, uh, like I said, there's a lot of variations, but with this build, we're playing Heat Wave, Overheat, and Thermal Bomb. There's a lot of different reasons for this. I'll kind of talk about that once we look at the gear, and then you'll see in the gameplay how you end up playing with this. Um, Overheat pretty much ends up being your main source of damage, and then you use Thermal Bomb and Heat Wave. Thermal Bomb is mainly to get a lot of single target value, and then Heat Wave is to get a lot of anomaly power, so those things kind of just buff your Overheat, and then you're also buffing your weapon mods. In terms of the class tree, uh, you can pretty much just copy paste this. Uh, let me move my camera here. You can pretty much just copy paste the class tree. Uh, basically, you're just trying to get as much cooldown reduction as humanly possible, and then you get a little bit of skill life leech here as well so that your survivability isn't zero. We'll just keep the camera right here for now. Um, if you guys like the camera here, type one in the comment section. If you don't like the camera here, type two in the comment section so I know. All right, thanks. Okay, treating it like a Twitch chat. Let's just get into the gear itself. The main functionality of the build is using three pieces of Kari, which is going to give you 50% AP for every single enemy damaged by heat wave, and this just scales forever. So. If you make sure to use your heat wave on large packs of enemies, your AP is going to scale insanely high, which is then going to make a lot of your other skills and other things do a ton of more extra damage. So that's pretty much the main purpose of this build. Um, in terms of the mods, we're going to talk about those obviously, but a lot of there's a lot of variation in terms of all the mods. I haven't tested every variation. This build by itself is already doing an insane amount. I got a ton of help with this uh, by my friend Archie big uh, pyro theory crafter guy but he's also worked with a lot of other pyromancers and they pretty much come to the conclusion that something around here is pretty much the more versatile setup and is pretty good and if i'm able to do you know pretty fast boom towns and gold every other map with it i think it's perfectly fine there's a couple optimizations we can have and i'll talk about the other uh, ways to set it up but as you can tell uh, with the mods that i currently have it runs perfectly fine so basically obviously you want three pieces of kari they roll pretty good by default um, instead of using the Akari, Akari helmet, you could use the Akari boots as those roll with a mod that you want. Uh, but also on top of that, that also gives you extra cooldown reduction. And cooldown reduction is the most important part when it comes to this build on getting on every single piece of gear. Because cooldown reduction means that you can press overheat more. And that's one of the main reasons that you're able to add clear pretty much. Is because your AP goes up so high that pressing overheat just does a ton of damage. So... Other than getting cooldown reduction, you want status power. Status power is just going to make your burn do a little bit more damage. Um, if you're playing the Ash Blast build, status power is completely mandatory as well, but we're not doing that. So today we're just going full anomaly power and then cooldown reduction when we can on like the purples and stuff and then status power. So let's just go into the mods one by one and I'll just mention which ones are mandatory. Pretty much almost everything I have on is kind of mandatory, but you can swap out a couple things and we'll mention those. So first off, Akari Helmet with Fire Tsunami increases the width of the firewall. This one isn't completely mandatory if you are very aware of how you spam your firewalls. If you were to use like the Akari boots and then use, instead of increase the width of the firewall, you can make it to where the firewall, you have two charges of heat wave. This might slow your clear times a little bit having to press it twice, but it might may give you a higher ceiling for overall anomaly power 
and then if you position correctly with your heat waves you might be able to get more value out of it however increasing the width is incredibly helpful because if enemies are spread out rather than in a tight clump you can guarantee that you get the extra ap from them and then we have the first mandatory mod being burnt out where enemies damaged by heat wave take 25 percent more damage for eight seconds one really cool thing about this is it actually works for your teammates too um, but also if you're using double heat wave this also scales infinitely so technically if you were to heat wave a guy you know over and over and over and over, and over this would keep scaling upward which this really helps with your boss damage and i think is mandatory and it's one of the reasons why i really want to try using double heat wave because i think it would help with my boss damage overall but yeah this is insanely good just makes every enemy that you damage by heat wave take 25 percent more damage for eight seconds and it scales with literally every other type of damage that you get so that's incredibly powerful and definitely mandatory and then on our chest piece, we have detonator where overheats cooldown is decreased by 50%, 100% mandatory. Then we have branded where thermal bomb enemies affected by it receive 40% more damage. Another uh, mandatory thing, I forget which piece this drops on. I think it drops on the chest of the lava lich, this branded thing. And this is pretty much the main reason that we use thermal bomb is because not only does thermal bomb do a little bit of AOE, but also if we're able to stack this with the heat wave thing and then make the main target take 40% extra damage and then stack it with heat wave, they're taking a whole bunch of extra damage and this gives us a lot of single target ability to pretty much burst down captains and stuff while overheat just takes care of all of the ad clear. So another mandatory thing with the setup. And then on the pants of the Akari, we're going to be using Anomaly Echo. And then our only defensive mod is Emergency Sans. Emergency Sans currently bugged. You could very easily play this build with a different mod. I'll show you guys what it is right now. Basically what Blacksmith does is each status condition consumed by the skill gives you 52k armor. I believe if my intel is correct, it stacks up to eight times. So because you're spamming overheat so often and you're also applying burn via thermal bomb and heat wave, um, you're going to have so much extra armor pretty much all the time and this is going to help mitigate the fact that uh, you don't have emergency stance bug anymore and then you also have skill life leech which is pretty much your sole way of healing having it on one or two pieces is pretty good uh, like having it on the pants of the akari here just so that you have some healing so if they ever fix emergency stance or you don't want to use emergency stance you can just pop on blacksmith and then we use anomaly echo here because that just gives us extra ap if survivability is even more of a problem, uh, these pants roll with Heat Wave uh, inflicts weakness on the target, and then that will make them deal 30% uh, less damage to you. So if you wanted to, you could just use, you could just not use Anomaly Echo, and then you can use Heat Wave, inflicts weakness, and then your overall damage isn't going to suffer that hard. Um, your extra percent Anomaly Power does scale off of your base Anomaly Power, so it'll get affected a bit, but not by, you know, an absolute ton, because Anomaly Echo doesn't doesn't stack, as far as I'm aware, so you only get 11k pretty much all the time, uh, but then your percentage is going to scale upward off of that. So, I kept Anomaly Echo for damage, but if you wanted to go survivability, you could just keep the uh, weakness mod that's on here. And then for our other, paint, other pieces, we just have purples. So I pretty much have perfect purples with uh, Anomaly Power, Cooldown Reduction, Status Power here where we have pants on fire overheat increases the damage by 48k to enemies who were damaged by the skill but didn't have their status consumed so pretty much any time that an enemy doesn't have a status on them uh, your overheat is just going to do extra damage which is pretty good because you just want overheat to do a lot of damage with ad clear and i believe this is going to scale up the more ap we have then we have fire frenzy the skill can be activated one more time for thermal bomb the only thing that you could probably replace this with you may not even need to play with this um the only reason that I do is because on certain maps when there's like multiple captains next to each other, it can be pretty good. You can instead use a mod where Thermal Bomb affects two targets, and that's a little bit more consistent than using this, because then you don't have to spend the time pressing both of them. Um, you don't even necessarily completely need this, it's just a little bit helpful because you can overheat, you can Thermal Bomb a main target, and then Thermal Bomb like an ad that's near the main target, and the ad will blow up, do a little bit, da little bit of damage to the main target, etc. And that's pretty good. Uh, but you don't even need to play with this you could probably play a uh, double heat wave and see similar success um feel free to test that out at your own discretion but that's what i'd recommend if you have the tier 3 mod where thermal bomb hits multiple targets uh slap that on there and that's probably a bit more consistent but i don't have that so this is what we're using and it works perfectly fine and then for the boots we have captain hunter to increase our damage to elites which is one of the main problems with this build uh, no status power on here unfortunately only got healing received but whatever and then we got cooldown reduction which is mandatory and then another mandatory mod being untamed power using the skill deals 51k damage to enemies within a five meter radius around you 
the damage is equal to 30% of your AP. So the more and more AP goes up, the more and more un untamed power goes up. As long as you play around this, this is going to do an actual ton amount of, or a ton of damage. Um, one thing now that I think about it, you could probably swap out Captain Hunter for another Heat Wave uh, because that'll kind of work a similar way. Um, it won't scale exactly like that, but um, if you really want to play with a you know, double Heat Wave, get your AP incredibly high. Uh, that would be one way to do that. Now that I think about it, I might play with that a little bit. So food for thought, uh, if you really like having extra heat waves, you could maybe replace Captain Hunter um, or even the Thermal Bomb thing, I think. But Untamed Power, absolutely necessary. It ends up doing, I think, like 20 or 30% of my overall damage. And also, um, one thing that I don't optimize in my gameplay that I actually need to pay more attention to is if you use your melee skill, this will proc Untamed Power, which can help because often there's a lot of little mobs that have like a little bit of health left and you're just like, oh my god, I don't have overheat, I need these guys to die or something, uh, you just melee them, and then it procs Untamed Power. But otherwise, all your skills are going to proc it, and Untamed Power, I think on average, is going to hit like two, 300k. Depends on how many enemies you hit with your Heat Wave and how much other AP you're scaling, but yeah, it scales up. Absolutely mandatory for this, in my opinion, and just is really good. Now, one more thing that completes a build is weapon mods. This is pretty big. The main thing is getting Fortress with Death Shield because Fortress gives you 43% extra damage based on your armor, but you have this up by default at uh, level 50, 50k armor. Getting extra damage, or extra, sorry, extra armor is not going to improve the damage because you already meet the threshold to get to the 43%. This doesn't only apply to weapons, it applies to your skills as well, so absolutely mandatory. I'd put it on both of your weapons. If you don't have this, um, unlucky. If you do, it's incredibly good. And then we have one gun with Moaning Winds, and pretty much we swap to that gun, and then we keep it unreloaded. So the second that we swap to it, it procs Moaning Winds, and we swap back. And then on the main gun that I'm constantly running around with, I have Shadow Comet. I recommend putting it on, or just keeping it on Funeral Pyre, and then putting Fortress on Funeral Pyre. Uh, the main reason is because shotguns have a spread, so if you shoot them at, a, at the right range and you try to get multiple enemies with the spread, Shadow Comet will actually fall down on multiple enemies if the spread hits them, hits multiple of them. But also Shadow Comet just does an absolute ton of damage. It's really good. Um, and then Moaning Winds is super good as well. I have been using Moaning Winds on my Torment and Agony mixed with Cliff Combustion. There's other things you could do with the pistols like putting Vulnerability on them uh, to do a little bit more boss damage, etc. I'm not even sure how worth it it is swapping to your pistol because then you lose Fortress. And I'm pretty sure that Moaning Wind scales off of Fortress as well. I don't even know if it's worth to do that. I've been doing it when I leave, like, sometimes enemies or, like, elites are left with, like, a smidge of extra health, right? So sometimes I just swap to this to, to pretty much end them. Um, but you could very easily just put Shadow Comet on this and, you know, kind of perform the exact same thing. Uh, but yeah, having a Fortress with Moaning Winds and then a Funeral Pyre with Shadow Comet and Fortress, I think, is mandatory and helps your damage out an absolute ton. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. I'll probably work on a phaser beam build and some other stuff in the future, but this is what I think is the best and what I wanted to upload first. And I think the gameplay, you know, shows itself. Um, like I said, I've only done like, I don't even think I've done 10 boom towns with playing this build. I'm pretty rusty at it. The gear and could be a little bit better and stuff. Uh, but I think that the fact that I can almost get sub four with it is pretty good, especially because I'm playing with it bad. So I hope that that just proves that the build is pretty good. And uh, yeah, I know that I could play better, guys. I think if I just got some more practice in, we could get it down pretty easily. I don't think we're going to beat the Ash Blast build in terms of like world record pace, but I think that this build is more consistent for maps that aren't Boomtown, and this build can definitely clear other maps. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If it did, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. So my recording on Twitch has copyrighted music, so we're just going to do this real quick. I don't know if I'll get a sub four, but I'll just show you guys gameplay. So pretty much you want to just dump a lot of ammo in your main mag that has uh, moaning winds and then you just main the gun that has shadow comet and you pretty much just want to spam overheat on cooldown and we just start off with some thermal bombs there and you also want to make sure to thermal bomb whatever your main target is first and then you can try to get some extra thermal bombs on mobs near them main reason for this is just try to kill them but also they take extra damage when they're thermal bombed right Should have done that better, but you know, it is what it is. I'm still, I'm still ru rusty AF at this. Out of comet, swap weapons. You pretty much just want to be spamming 
spamming your shadow comets and stuff on CD here. That wasn't too bad for the first door. This room can be can be a little bit scary. If Golem wasn't bugged, you'd have to play this a little bit differently. Um, you just use the other mod. You just start off with that, and with a little comet or comet action. I'm gonna throw off some of those for some skill leech. Pop the heat wave on these three guys. Maybe saving the uh, saving a thermal bomb for for that might be the, the true strat, but that's okay. Get some Moaning Winds action going. So you have to kill these two guys first, or else um, the guys up here won't spawn. Pretty much all the other adds kind of just end up dying to overheat, just killing them. So that guy we got down pretty good. We just make sure to spam overheat. Get off me, please. Thank you. Here, I could have gotten a thermal bomb on there, and we might have been able to kill him a little faster. But you know, who's who's really complaining? Only problem I have consistently is this guy. We just burst him down with some of our mods. He lives a little bit. Uh, our elite. Killing capability would be better with double heat wave. And both of my thermal bombs whiffed there. Comet him, wins him, overheat again. So, you know, I'm no speedrunner. My my route for this isn't great or whatever, but hey, we're we're able to do it. By the way, overheat's range is just infinite, so you can just spam it literally all of the time. And uh, always hit people with it. My moaning wind swap there was bad, but hey, that's okay. Thermal bombing right here into a into a heat wave is like actually insane and makes it feel so good. You just kill all of these guys. They actually just kind of get owned. How to combat him? By the way, one thing worth noting is that um, melee procs uh, untamed power, which is something that I don't take. Uh, Take advantage of enough. I didn't moaning ones. Guess I accidentally reloaded it. Pretty close, four minutes and two seconds, whatever. Pretty much what I did on Twitch, so could be better if uh, I was better at the game and you know, gear was slightly better. But four minutes and five seconds, that's that's respectable enough. I mean, that's basically techno techno time. Uh, we'll show the damage at the end here. I guess we'll just you guys like seeing loot, so I'll show you guys loot. Um. Yeah, I think the the uh, the Ash Blast build makes this map a little faster. Uh, playing playing TB makes it a little bit slower, but after talking with the guys, uh, they say this is more consistent overall, and I would tend to agree. It seems like the boss damage is is pretty good. So most of our damage is overheat, and then Untamed Power carries Shadow Comet, Moaning Winds is a pretty good amount of damage. I could make Moaning Winds do more damage if I played better, and then Burn, and then. DB and Heatwave are literally just there to buff us. So yeah, hope you enjoyed and see you later.